everybody, everyone. Adam. Hello, hello. And Josh. Hello. How are y'all doing this evening? Pretty good. good. I think. Pretty good. There's four of on. us this time. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is weird. This There's so is, many people. This is the first time that 72 Connector <laughs> has had a four person cast. So uh, we would like to give a, a warm. 72 pin connector uh introduction and onboarding to josh the latest hey. family member in the in crew 72 <laughs> um yeah we are expecting massive sales numbers uh we're expecting stock price jumps and if he doesn't the board will fire him fire <laughs> damn it <laughs> no yep <laughs> all right so what you all been up to this week oh just gearing up uh working my last full week of work before I travel and take time off for the RLCS. Yes. And, yes. Mm -hmm. um, I tried something delicious this week. Oh, really? What Nashville was that? Hot, Nashville Hot Chicken. A place Ooh. opened up so... uh, pretty close to my house, actually. And it's been there for probably six months, and I have yet to actually go in and try it. So nice. I finally, went, I finally went, went in there and tried it. It's really good. What's what's the uh, the difference between Nashville hot chicken and yeah. just hot chicken? Right, I right. that too. <laughs> so I, I actually I didn't know what it was, and when I was looking it up, I looked up some recipes for it and like how it's made. And it's basically regular fried chicken with like a small amount of hot. They use a small amount of hot sauce in the batter when they bread it and stuff. Ooh, and okay. then they got a they they make a sauce that goes over it after they fry it. And it's half butter, half lard, a whole lot of cayenne and like garlic oh. and brown sugar and stuff. And, and they melt all that down and it makes this super toxic biohazard looking red sauce stuff that they baste over the top of it after they fry the chicken. Good God. Uh, so, yeah, it sounds amazing. It's, it, sounds it's, amazing. It, was, it was pretty good. I want to try it at another place too. Um, most places offer like different levels of heat. So... I, being naive, got the hottest one, and it hurt. <laughs> it physically that hurt to amazing, eat. sounds amazing, though. But it actually was cool. I'm glad. It wasn't... I didn't die. I could try, probably do it again. But yeah, it was I, I, very, I, could... I was sweating. I was crying. It was It was pretty... It was intense. But, but it was perfect. Was just it to just, that. like, heat with heat? Because I've had, like, hot sauce, which is just like, oh, yeah. this is just painful. Or did it actually have good flavor to it? It had a pretty good flavor to it. It was, uh, it wasn't the best chicken I've had. So, and I don't know how much of that is just me not liking hot chicken as much Nashville style, or if that's just that specific place. I did get takeout and took it home, so it might have sat for a little bit. Okay. Ah. But um, that but no, the flavor flavor experience. was pretty good. It's very very cayenne, very you know, it's the usual sort of. Uh, Hot that sounds amazing. Chicken spices. It was good. It was pretty good. I'm glad I tried it. <laughs> to me, the first I'm a big time fan I tried... of buffalo wings, so I'm all about that. That sounds yeah. amazing. Like amazing. Uh, it's not buffalo wings, obviously. It's, no. But uh, I love buffalo wings. So spicy chicken, I'm all about. <laughs> yeah, for me, the first time I try someplace, I want to make sure I try it there. I mean, I because like you said, takeout yeah. sometimes the food changes yeah. a little bit as it settles and maybe yeah. blends with flavors. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. It's like uh, Lens, yeah, the very first time I had Lens. It says Vietnamese soup. You get it there, it's this big bowl of awesomeness. Yep. But if you take it home, oh, man. you realize you get like this weird styrofoam with all this stuff in this huge container of just broth. Yeah, it's it's totally yeah, right, different right. experience. You, you cannot take <laughs> pho home unless you have had you, pho No, you properly. can, and it's still great. That, oh, it's it, still it, it's the same. Yeah, it's no, so good. I've done that multiple times. Actually, I do that fairly <laughs> regularly. It's just I, like I really nice top ramen. I mean, pho is just really nice top ramen. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, you no, watch your language, that's sir. Not even close. <laughs> don't even get. Don't hey, even come on. It's then, noodles no. and broth, and then they apply meat. Okay. Yeah. Well, come on. Adam, there's you're... also carbon and hydrogen, but that doesn't mean everything's the same. Adam, yeah, you, you're, you're, not, you're getting I mean, offensive. Are you telling here. me you're not made of pho? <laughs> no. You, you've well, never had. Be. You've never had high-end uh, ramen, have you? I haven't. No. It's it's really good and honestly they are very comparable. Yeah, they are. Nice. They are. Yes. The only thing yes. with ramen yes, is yes, they yes. they tend to like when I've had it they've thrown like a half boiled egg in with it and some stuff like that. Oh, so good. Cool. It's really good. So good. 
No, yeah, fuzz is great. And when I when I get the takeout from Lynn's, I have to use a mixing bowl to eat it because none of my bowls are big enough to yes, hold on. Nice. <laughs> the very first time um, I ever did that, someone brought it to me takeout. Yeah. And I'm like, this is gonna be awesome. And I'm like, I have a bowl, and all of a sudden I realize, oh, this isn't a bowl kind of food. This is like bring out your Tupperware kind of food. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Pyrex. So, so I've got, I've actually got uh, something for a 72 food connector this week. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Chicken truck. <laughs> okay. So chicken you work truck. in downtown Seattle like me. Have you ever had chicken fix the chicken truck? No. Um, there's too many roach coaches. Damn. I don't remember the ones I've had, but I haven't had any American ones. Well, this is sort of American, sort of not. So they've got, I want to say filipino style egg rolls i could be totally off on that so so hmm. don't hate me i'm a dumb american um but it's like <laughs> chicken egg rolls they've got chicken rice balls with seasoning inside of them and then just plain old delicious chicken strips but they have banana ketchup which is the weirdest thing to me it's really good i don't like it half the time but it's a weird style ketchup i love taking like really simple stuff and just fucking with it like curry ketchup best shit in the world banana ketchup <laughs> nice it's weird it's okay banana ketchup no banana i'd ketchup. try it eh, it, it ain't bad okay. it ain't bad it just sounds so weird it is it really is <laughs> you've got like the overpowering sweetness of ketchup but just a hint of like runt banana flavor okay runt? yes like the runt like the, okay. the mini it's like a yeah, mini the banana candy. Um, yeah i'm no longer interested in this yeah yeah i was gonna say you ruined me there. <laughs> it, it's runt banana anyway. flavor with some ketchup it's actually not you... bad you should try it <laughs> so <laughs> Tom's officially talked me away from this yeah. food truck yeah you don't have to get you banana proved... ketchup you can get sweet chili you can get just plain jane barbecue if you wanted to <laughs> sweet chili is really good i just like ketchup they anyway, do I have just like ketchup. ketchup yeah. With the banana run ketchup. ketchup, your food critic privileges have been revoked. <laughs> yes. <Damn. I'm> sorry. <laughs> when something is awesome and then compared to a Wonka candy. <laughs> hey, yeah. I, I love runts and I love Wonka candy. And uh, I actually yeah. went to like a, a dollar store and I bought a baggie of just the bananas from runts. <laughs> nice. I have those. You can buy just banana. You're a horrible individual. Oh, it's so good. I, I kind of like so the orange good. ones. I don't like any of those really. If I go Wonka, it's got to be Nerds or Laffy Taffy. <laughs> Laffy Taffy. Or good. you take Laffy Taffy and it has the best roll jokes in on nerds. The inside of the wrapper. Oh my god! So I, I love puns and I cannot stand Laffy Taffy. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I got something for seventy two Food Connector too. If you're oh yeah, it. yeah. Let's hear it. I do, and and that, that way we can get through all the food in one go, right? Um, so I had uh, I went to in my area. There is this mythical uh mexican food spot and the reason i say mythical is because there's this lady and she ran this mexican food joint out of her house and that oh. you know the the food department was like mm, no you can't do that right <laughs> so, so she, got, she, she got kicked out of there right but apparently it was like the best right so she can't cook food there anymore apparently it's like the best mexican food you've ever had mm -hmm. um and then she bought like a truck and then from there uh, the community got together and was like, okay, we love this Mexican food place. This is the best Mexican food place ever. Mm -hmm. We're going to buy you a place. And so the community got together, got some money together, and bought her an, uh, an actual restaurant. Good God. So I didn't, I didn't know any of this, right? So <laughs> the first time I went on the, the, my first adventure to this Mexican food place, we couldn't find it. We, we drove around for like like 30 minutes. I'd say an hour because it sounds more fantasy. Uh, fancy that way but I, uh, no no self-respecting person is gonna hunt for a food place in an hour but like 30 minutes driving around hunting for this place and we couldn't find it so uh then one of my friends showed up and he's like oh hey and finishes the tail for me because all i knew is she was working out of her house i had the completed tale of her getting her uh getting her actual establishment and we finally went and it was amazing yeah, nice. it was so good. It, I have never had Mexican food that good. It was awesome. Nice. I love good authentic that's, Mexican food. That's a cool food. story too. I like yeah, that. yeah. That's so uh, so. Uh, uh, and I some also got fucking amazing huh? Mexican food. It was honestly Mexican food is kind of like this kind of samey sometimes. You know, like, yeah. It, it is what it is, right? But I don't know. It's usually in the meat is where like 
you know, something magical happens and the, and it absolutely did <laughs> it was really good and then we uh and she just she it's just her in this like little divey corner hole in the wall mm-hmm. and so i got her uh her card now and I, now my company is catering from her Nice. So, nice. So, yeah. so I'm like, oh, this needs to be known. <laughs> That's yes. awesome. So Excellent. so let's right. let's give out some free advertising for fucking awesome Mexican food. Where is this place and what's the name of it again? All right, I'll get you right now. Uh let me I, I should have been more prepared. I was <laughs> That's gonna... fine. It's fine. <laughs> I, I love I love giving free advertising to food establishments that actually deserve it. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah, video right, games right, are really a secondary thing on this podcast. I think we're really all about the food and and whiskey, <laughs> yeah. of course. Got to have the whiskey. Agreed. Yeah, Agreed. absolutely. But yeah, so I feel bad. I have no food connector this week. No. So Did since, you not uh, eat since I'm living alone for <laughs> the didn't next eat all little week. bit, I went back to my old ways and I made stir fry every night this week. <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> nice. And part of the Honestly, surf fry is I started implementing uh, Frank's Red Hot since I didn't have cayenne. Oh, and I cook, cool. I start with oil, add a little water, gets the chicken all nice and tender, real good. Anyway, yeah, it's boring. It's stir fry. It sucks. <laughs> there you go. I got it right here. It's uh, Las, Las Camisas. I can't say this. Is anybody good at, uh, <laughs> at uh, oh. pronouncing Mexican food um, <laughs> locations? No. Las, I'm, I'm going to butcher that. Kismosas. We're three guys yeah, from that, Ohio. Cheese mosas. Las Kismosas. Here, chat. I'll, right. I'll, I'll, I'll hit you. I'll hit you with it. For, for those of you on the <laughs> audio version, L A S space C H I S M O S A S. We apologize. We apologize to all of our Spanish-speaking listeners. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We are. So, very so sorry. this should be very uh, simple, where is and it's not. Again? This is on Monument uh in concord california so it's okay very there you close go. to very close to us so hit um, up, tell them 72 like, pin connector sent you they will right, give absolutely. you nothing yeah. but just tell them yes yes tell and them and they will be very confused they're very broken english it should be fine maybe they'll be a, maybe they'll be our first sponsor yes that'll be this awesome. podcast is sponsored that's by that's Lost Moses. Sponsor. dude everybody hold up your burrito can't pronounce if every <laughs> podcast gets catered mexican food i'm okay with this uh i'm yeah. totally uh, in like what we will change our logo <laughs> change yeah. our logo <laughs> we'll, we'll put the taco bell logo in place of 72 pin connector we'll the taco say, we, bell we, connector we, we keep the logo we just put some red white and green in there and we'll be good yeah that'd be okay take the mexican flag but instead of like a symbol in the middle it's 72 pin connector that could work okay either way yeah you know enough of that she enough <laughs> anyway Adam, video games good sir yeah have you been playing much of anything this week yeah, a little bit. Um, I played. I actually I opened up a game I haven't played in a long time. I've already beat this game, but it's it's one of my favorite games, The Swapper. Yes. Ah, and uh, if you're not familiar with The Swapper, it's it's a uh, puzzle platformer that has to do with this gun that you make that clones you, so you can make up to four clones of yourself, and that's how the puzzle mechanics work. And then when you move around, all the clones move in unison. So that oh, the puzzles are built around that, but then there's also a story to the game, and the story is really cool. It's pretty philosophical. It's very sci-fi, identity sort of stuff. Uh, very very cool. But one of the coolest parts about this game is the visuals, and it's one of the reasons I picked it back up. The visuals, um, all the assets in the games, in the game is pretty much like handmade stuff. Like he took clay molds and like pieces of paper, really, really? And stuff I like that. I was gonna say it looks very claymation, which yeah. is fantastic. Yeah, all the assets are made with stuff, and obviously with a lot of filters over it. But it's a very, very visually beautiful game. Very That's cool. amazing! What a cool concept. Yeah, I like that a lot. I love but, that. But one of the reasons I launched it, other than just wanting to play it again because it's awesome. Is I was I've been doing this uh, beautiful screenshots of games I love thing, and I've been just posting screenshots of some of my favorite games on Twitter. And for I was those one of, the of you ones that I to do. who might be new to the cast, Adam is a fan of what you might call pretentious art games. <laughs> yeah. I love yes, pardon me. I love pretentious art games. Love them. Yes. So Dear Adam, Esther, I played them yeah. so many times. Adam's going to load up Swapper on his MacBook Pro. Go into the Starbucks wearing his fedora. I, I own exactly zero Apple products. And good. Yeah. <laughs> because it's not hipster okay. enough. Adam, Adam runs yeah. Linux on the desktop. 
Right? No, just his own. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's hipster. I think that no, that's that's you, Tom. You're projecting well, it's everything through a VPN, which no, 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 no. absolutely you're fucks pro- the podcast. He's Tom, hipster. you're projecting. <laughs> you're, so, you're projecting on me. Very, very. And he he played God <laughs> Home, and it made him cry. Yeah. So oh, no, Tom's got <laughs> issues. Is what we just got out of that. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. you were saying no. The the Swapper's not a super pretentious art game. It's really not. It's, it's it's definitely a puzzle sci-fi puzzle platformer. It definitely, good. definitely check it out. It's really good. I, I, I don't know how much hype it got when it came out, but I feel like it's understated because it's such a good game, and I don't often hear people talk about it. Yeah, it kind of like it came and went really quickly. Um, it should have been mm-hmm. one of those games that you know stuck near the top of the indie charts. But I think the issue is it came out with a whole lot of other indie games that were good but not incredible mm-hmm. right it didn't reach like the world okay. of you were braid levels of, of awesome it was it was a good game but it was just a good game and i think that's why it kind of got forgotten well what i've what really pains me with indie games anymore is full featured full scale games like swapper that get released get overshadowed by the promise of these early access indie games because mm. they tell everyone what they want to make and they don't necessarily have to go do it. Whereas the swapper is done. It's a beautiful game. It is complete, mm-hmm. but people don't care because it doesn't have the promise of the others. I could see that. I can see that. I would say, Maybe. I would say it's for me, it's more the fact it's just basic advertising. I, I think a lot mm-hmm. of it comes down to that, like word of mouth advertising. Uh, a lot of these um, big, uh, M- uh, not really MMOs anymore, but really, uh, survival games get a lot of hype and a lot of people talk about them. They, they generate a lot of buzz. And since there's so many like lost promises on each individual, uh, like survival esque games and now mm-hmm. like H one Z one esque games, um, you know, the next one generates a lot of buzz. Cause I call, Oh, they did everything. The previous one said they were going to do. So we're going to move to that one. And mm-hmm. then it just kind of piggybacks and they sort of leapfrog each other and keep going until, you end up with like, you know, just really shitty games in general. Things like the Swapper just don't get talked about. You know, um, I don't know how many people, like it, it was, let's see, developers were uh, facepalm uh, face games and Curve Digital. Like, I don't, you know, <laughs> it's, it, Nobody's it's not heard like, of them. you've probably right. never heard I of them. I mean, I, I, yeah, exactly my yeah. point. They, they did a bunch of really small games, maybe helped out on a few games. Mm-hmm. Um, so like those guys don't just don't get the advertising. And so you're you're just hoping that maybe someone will pick it up in like a humble bundle or something like that and mm-hmm. play it out, which it has so, been in multiple humble yeah. bundles. And it was seen on, it on yeah. every Steam sale the past two years, yeah. right? Two and or indie, three years, it's always discounted heavily. And when you go and you look at stuff like Braid and uh, and World of Goo and those ones that like came out during like the pinnacle, like the prime when right. they, when yeah. people were actually generating like indie games and they were good and they were good out of the gate because it was just like the first indie titles, right? They were done. Uh, and then you had games. Right. And then you had like right. Double Fine. Double Fine was doing really good then. Like, you know, you have all of these like really great uh, publishers actually come like they're indie developers, but they were actually developing games. Now you have a ton of developers. You can have like, you know, Jim Bob in the back room, you know, putting out a game and it, it, it could be absolute garbage and unfinished, but they're pumping them out, right? Those are coming. Yeah. It's so hard. It's getting close to like mobile game status. Yeah, especially so, with Kickstarter. Kickstarter is helping fuel that fire yeah. hard. Right, and and it makes sense. It's a good strategy. But when you when you come to a game like the Swapper, you're like, okay, what's going on? Oh, I don't know. I haven't heard about it because these yeah. guys can't afford advertising, and they just get buried amongst the other shit. And so you just have to find the diamond in the rough. The Swapper yeah. looks fantastic. I I am definitely gonna play that. Yeah, Dark Soul Invader in the chat said it actually did pretty well too. So it might be oh, just good. I didn't notice it, or I just haven't heard a lot of people talking or, about or it. Didn't so it have actually, the right. hype behind well, it, right? It never really went yeah. viral, from what I understood. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, it's not, if it did well, that's great. But uh, it's mm-hmm. more using this as a as a sounding board for the rest of the games that are buried out there. There's yeah. quite a lot of them that are just that just don't uh, don't generate hype, you know. And, yeah. and you just yeah. gotta find them. You just gotta. Yep hunt through the steam store and find something good well right. like for example Absolutely. this one sold 800k and it's a full feature complete game whereas something like factorio which i love has already sold over a million copies but i mean it's still severely early access right I mean, they've just this recent beta i'm starting to play put things in that completely change the game Right. right. Uh, some wow. of the st- some of the stuff of the game, I should I'm, say. I'm really hoping with indie games in particular, <clears throat> we don't see a return to uh, 
like Atari in the late 70s, early 80s, where people just completely stopped buying games that are marked as early access or beta because the vast majority of them are unfinished. They won't ever be finished. And frankly, the most of them out there are shit, right? Most of them out there aren't worth your time or money. Even if they're free, they're not worth your time. Um, I I really hope this doesn't decimate consumer confidence. But we're starting to see a little bit of a backlash in the gaming industry with things like Mass Effect Andromeda, stuff people were really looking forward to. On the flip Mm -hmm. side of that coin, you've got stuff like Horizon Zero Dawn and Zelda to sort of balance it out. But it's, I don't know, the past couple years has kind of seemed a little dreary for gaming. It's starting to tick up, I feel, but it has seemed a little lacking in quality. I don't view it that way. Yeah, I I feel, I don't know. I, I, I mean, okay, so this is kind of what I think about how that goes, is I feel like there's always going to be a breaking point, but it's going to move in like a wave. So you're going to have like all these shit games come out and then people are going to stop buying them. And then it's mm-hmm. like, you know, it's going to plummet, but then like really good games are going to come out and it's going to catch that wave. And a few cool indie games are going to come out mm-hmm. and then people are going to buy them and then people are going to buy all the indie games and then it's going to plummet. It, it, it's just kind of how things work, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's just an up and down. It's, it's, you earn the trust back, you eliminate the trust, you earn the trust, you eliminate the trust. It just goes yeah. back and forth. It, but I mean, In recent years, it's been sensationalism. People mm-hmm. like the negative vibe because it gets more clicks, it's That's louder. True. That's right. Like, everyone heard mm-hmm. about Andromeda's heirs. Everyone has. But you right. know what most people haven't? How fucking fantastic Nier Autonomo was. I mean, we're talking yeah. a potential right, game yeah. of the year game that no one's talking about, but you got this shit storm that um, Bioware released with Andromeda, which since mm-hmm. they fixed a lot of the things, but that's what got all the lip service. It's well, that's because Mass like, Effect is a huge series that's got a lot of... Okay, right, yeah, I mean, well, then, all yeah, that, yeah, yeah, near, near, near relative, how many people okay. have heard of the first year. Nier game? Right. An- right. Another, another example then, uh, Mortal Kombat X. Um, people right. might say, well, mm-hmm. it's Mortal Kombat, but it's only the second one in that series because I Nether- Mortal Kombat was dead. Nether Realms, yeah. when Midway, <laughs> no. when Midway went bankrupt, Nether Realms spun up, made nine as a reboot, and then 10, they fucked up the PC release and everyone went crazy about it. Mm. But I mean, it's just, I do remember that the negative stuff are what people like to really harp on. And that yeah. is what I, people like, oh, it's been so bad. If you look at this year, this year has released some of the right. best games in the first half yeah. of a year oh, I absolutely. ever remember. I, I well, agree watch, with that, watch the evening. Watch the evening news and how much of it is bad news. Is the world going to hell or is That's it just getting point. more exposure? Exactly. Well, at the point. same time, at the same time, like I've, I, I've seen countless posts and pictures of, of Horizon Zero Dawn's like amazing, you know, amazing animation and cinematic uh, environments and how it feels like you're in the movie the whole time. I've seen like uh, I'm going back to The Witcher and how they every single day there'd be a new post about like look what I found on The Witcher it's amazing mm-hmm. or even for uh, what was it uh, Injustice uh, has there's so many posts about how great the facial animations are and how impressive that game is. Um, yes really yes. like you have all of the, you actually do have a lot of great content coming out and people recognize that and they see that mm-hmm. and they, they talk about it constantly like dark souls people still talk about dark souls people still talk about horizon zero dawn even though it, you know a lot of games dwindle out by now mm-hmm. but you know if horizon zero dawn put out a new you know if they put out a new uh dlc people will go crazy and you'd see it all over the place again mm-hmm. so that's a good point so i, I mean it's just not... keep just keep in mind that like there's there's a lot of shit out there, but there's also yeah. a lot of good stuff. They'll go in yeah. tandem. They really do. Yeah. 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 And the thing is, it feels equal, but really, like what you're saying, it's one part shit to nine parts great. Just that one part mm-hmm. shit is equally as loud as the nine parts awesome. It, it depends on where you but, look, yeah. there, right? I don't want to spend too much time. Yeah. But it, I, yeah. It's not nine parts great to one part shit, right? Because yeah. we don't hear about the truly shit early access. Games, yeah. Right? yeah. That's true. Although I, I go back to the Reddit they, post of like they, the person that said, "Hey, well, I'm going to make a dragon game that's 100% science based, where you can literally do anything you want," and everyone tore her apart in the game dev subreddit, right? Because that's right. It. Yeah. There are so many issues with that, I'm not even going to begin on it. But we don't see the stuff that's actually truly shit that's getting panned because it's so bad, it's not worth panning. Yeah, it immediately one, gets one, sucked into the void of... We right. should, but we this should is start also you being you. You, <laughs> you automatically said you don't see the shit and you don't recognize that you're not also seeing the good because yeah. there's also yeah. great in there that you're not seeing as well. Right, right. right. Anyway, enough of that. We Adam, was there anything else that, that you've been playing? <laughs> uh, yeah, played some Battlegrounds. Uh, 
always playing Battlegrounds. It's a good game. I got pretty frustrated the other night, though. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, just got an update recently. Yeah, I was so, going to ask if you played since the update. Yeah, we played a little bit. Um, I did get the new sniper rifle, like my second game of playing after oh, updating. Oh, nice. How was yeah. it? Uh, it's pretty cool. I didn't get a chance to kill anybody with it, but um, it's a nine. it shoots 9mm ammo, and it comes uh, stock with a 4 times scope and a silencer. Yeah, it looks pretty Presser. awesome. Yeah, yeah, it looks pretty amazing. And I didn't, I didn't know this before the update, but I clicked to toggle the fire mode, and it has a full auto mode. No way. Yeah, it's yes, full auto. And it's really quick. Okay. And then single shot as fast as you can pull the trigger. Like it's Wow, that's insane. Yeah. But it, it shoots is 9 mil, so it's not going to be a one-shot kill or anything. Yeah, I actually picked it up uh, the last game I played right before the podcast. And there was a guy down, and I shot him two or three times with it, and he still didn't die. I mean, yeah. it's really weak, and I don't like the scope. It gives you an 8x scope. It is not the same 8x scope you get no. on other guns. It's not 8x, it's 4x, I oh, think. Oh, 4x, okay. Either oh, okay. way, <clears throat> it, it looks like the ACOG, and it's got extra shit on it. I just don't like it. It's my least favorite sight I've used. Mm -hmm. It almost seems like it's not really meant to be played like a sniper rifle anyway. Like, it almost seems, uh, you know, use it in the same way you would use the assault rifles. Yes. Right. It yeah, might be it's... more of a scout concept. Like, uh, yeah. you know, those are like your your binoculars that shoot bullets. <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but the fact that it's automatically suppressed and things, um, I think that's, it's a, I think it's a cool trade-off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's. I was really happy with the update. Also, they added, they had an issue with the way they built the game. Well, I'm assuming this the way everything went, where mm -hmm. the you mount a sight onto your gun. When the gun recoils, they're not having the sight recoil at the same rate. So what was happening mm -hmm. is, if you shot twice before your gun resettled, that second shot wasn't going where the red dot told you it was going. Oh, so right, this right. update fixed that. So That's if you good. wanted to shoot really quick, your sight always tells you where you're going to hit. And the yeah. only reason we know this is because Player Unknown put out an incredibly awesome uh, blog post and video, like gifable video that you can just sit and watch on Twitter. Mm -hmm. It's not that long. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Showing kind of the, the pre and post update where they fixed right. this issue. I mm -hmm. love it. Like it's it's game yeah. dev porn to me. I love it when game devs. Yeah. Yeah. We ran into this cool bug that was really annoying players. Here's the before. Here's why it happens. Here's how we fix it. And here's mm -hmm. the behavior now. It's I love to right. see the transparency. So awesome. It's great. Mm -hmm. uh, a player unknown is uh, quite frankly an unknown developer, right? Until Battlegrounds, which is that their mm -hmm. first game? No, 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 no. Okay. No. He um, is. He was known before. He is the one right. who made the mod. That started all this. Mm. Okay. Okay. Well, I right. haven't heard he of him. He worked with Arma, right? I had yeah. never heard of him. Yes. But I, I've never been into Arma, right? Tactical shooters are not my shtick. Well, no, it would have been mm. H1Z1. He was one of... I don't think he was the oh, initial... Oh, he's H1Z1? I thought I he was... I thought it was, he was, it was an Arma mod, but I mean, it was the same kind of thing with H1Z1. Okay. Oh, right. Oh. Okay. Okay. Um, but, you know, I absolutely love that they're being this transparent and they're giving game dev porn just out to the masses because mm. I oh my god I love that stuff I could watch those videos for hours just game design videos all day long the one yeah. thing this did to frustrate me is I want that fucking mode that they're in on the demo uh, there is no oh, practice <laughs> mode in this game and this guy's yeah, in a sandbox where people keep spawning and just keep shooting them it's like damn it put me there I agree. Yeah. Now, this patch actually pissed me off. I think it completely broke the meta of the game. As a player who has played a total of twenty minutes, I disapprove of this patch. Wow. <laughs> okay. All right, Tom. But for everyone else who does play there and was complaining, like, oh, optimization, blah, 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 they did address that. They said that next month's patch is going to be pretty much nothing on gameplay, pure optimization updates. Right. That's I'm ready for this. Yeah. I am ready for this. I heard that I heard that they were shooting for the next two months to be nothing but servers and game optimization. Now that that was just a speculation of something I heard recently. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if that if they hold to that. But that sounds that sounds amazing. Honestly, yeah. if there's certain games um, that really could use some server updates, and I, I like that these people are addressing it directly. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah, it's great to hear a developer admit, yes, we have something wrong, and next month mm -hmm. we are going to fix it. And yeah, I also and love just... the fact that people were accusing them of having cheap servers. They straight up came out and said, nope, we have the best thing AWS has. It is not a server <laughs> issue. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's server yeah. side, but it's yeah. not the servers. 
Right. But yeah, they definitely need to scale that with the, the increasing popularity of the game. So definitely good to see that the, the next patch is going to address some of that stuff. Uh, I mean, I, yeah. as someone who plays just under 60 frames per second, it would be nice to get that 60 frames per second consistently. <laughs> so yeah. optimizations are great. I'm, I'm definitely for it. Yeah, as someone who plays at the 60 frames, eh. It's... Yeah. <laughs> It'll get there, and I there are some things that are nice that hopefully server optimizations will help with is some of the mm -hmm. desync issues where you die from someone who hasn't opened the door yet and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Uh, yeah. One tiny thing, and this is the tiniest complaint ever because it doesn't actually affect mm -hmm. anything that really matters. I'd love <laughs> to see less uh, like jerky updates when you're spectating other players. Yeah, the spectating. Is yeah, that's, I literally I have played the game for twenty minutes, so my my concerns are probably not valid at all. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, that's absolutely the, valid. That is a, absolutely valid. Yeah, the, the spectator yeah. mode spectates is, bad. is just hard yeah. to watch. Well, um, part of the reason I heard about that is I think that I heard something that they do prediction on it, where your client is going to be predicting what the person you're spectating is doing, and more times than not, the prediction algorithm is fucking uh, trash they need to buy a better crystal ball yes a much better yeah, crystal ball but much. at least you need to hire spectate. a new wizard <laughs> but yeah. um other than battlegrounds i've just been playing some rocket league and that's that pretty much wraps it up for me what about you josh what you've been getting into uh i finished abzu mm. abzu was yes uh it's I kind of hated it to begin with. So it, well, that, that, that's a ringing fun. endorsement. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let, let, so, so what it is, is you're just a guy and well, essentially you're a robot. So you're just a guy and you're swimming through the sea, right? Started out for me, like really dry, really lame. I was just like, okay, so I'm like looking at fish. Great. You know, I'm, if anyone doesn't know, I am not a pretentious gamer. <laughs> I'm far <laughs> from it. I need to know what I'm getting myself into. I need to experience something. If I'm not getting anything, I move on. Like, uh, I mean, I played Flower, but that's about as far as it goes, right? Um, so going into it, it just didn't, like, there was nothing there. And then I started going a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper, and kept going through the whole thing. It's really short games about, like, halfway through it. Um, you know, spoilers, uh, uh, you know, I, I guess I don't know if I should go into spoilers or not, but maybe I'll just leave it because it's so short. I won't say any spoilers. So something happens and you're like, oh, it's kind of a setup for this sort of semi-emotional moment. Interesting. And then you kind of play through it. And like the ending, it is kind of like a payoff to that. So it was, it felt a lot like a, um, like a one quick story of someone experiencing something getting like you know having a loss i'm trying to phrase it in a way that uh it doesn't um spoil too much but like getting a, a pretty blunt loss uh and then kind of dealing with it and mm -hmm. the resolution to that was the ending which was you know i, I assume you know defeating the final situation so as cryptic as that was uh <laughs> you know I, I again i don't want to spoil anything because it's kind of nice mm -hmm. but it was a very simplistic story the visuals are really nice um they're really interesting they're a lot like um your uh what's the puzzle game that witness. adam likes a lot witness, the witness. It, it, felt, it felt a lot like underwater witness except no puzzles oh, okay. you're just oh. kind of you're just kind of walking through it right so so the, the geometry and how it was built it looks a lot like the witness. It's just underwater. God, it was fun. It was it was a good it was a good ride for sure. Um, if you can pick it up for free, do it. I wouldn't spend too much on it though, because yeah. <laughs> it's a one and done situation. You underwater really walking simulator. You were really good at just ringing endorsements. I hated it to yeah. start with. If it's free, get it. Don't pay for it. Man, you're making yeah. this thing. <laughs> I, I, well, I, think I mean, this it was is good. It was sixty dollar game of the year instant purchase. Is what you're telling me. It, it was. It was good. It was a good experience. It was a good. It was a good ride through from beginning to end. You felt, you felt something through the end, but you felt one thing, mm -hmm. and that's the problem. Has no. It's really that's the problem. It's it's short. It's one experience and you end. It did make sense. It made sense from beginning and like you got halfway through, but there was no reason for you to be underwater. Mm -hmm. There was no like, I mean, there was like, they had all these like cryptic things on the walls that said like, oh, it looks like an underwater society and all this stuff. And they're trying to like 
it seemed like they were building up this like more epic, grandiose uh, finale, right? But it wasn't that. It didn't feel like that. It felt at the very end, it was just you dealing with the loss. Well, it was a more subtle. It was a more subtle thing, but it was built up into something a little less with the environment. So if you're a very exploratory person, like if you like to look and feel and experience your surroundings, it will feel like a little bit of a letdown at the end as far as like what happens. But if you're just blitzing through it from beginning to end, you kind of get it. If that makes okay. sense. It's, it's a little bit yeah. of an opposite situation, which uh, I enjoyed. Like I, I, again, I was just, I was just kind of speeding through it in a way. Um, but I enjoyed the, the, the experience I had on it. Um, yeah. It was that's, good. It was a good ride. That's the mm -hmm. issue with walking simulators, though, right? With the vast right. majority of them, you run through them once, and you yeah. there is no replayability. The only way I've seen mm -hmm. replayability done is in uh, Stanley Parable and Dear Esther, where literal like chunks of content are randomized, and just you won't ever see them in a single playthrough. Um, yeah. the Stanley Parable right. did it in a very non-pretentious, really funny way. Dear Esther mm -hmm. was pretentious. It just drips with pretentiousness. That's the only thing. <laughs> right. yeah. There's no gameplay. There's no story. It's just some dude reading poetry while you walk through a Half-Life 2 environment. Uh, <laughs> yeah, fuck that. That's no, literally that's, nothing entire... about that sounds enticing. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy ever, it. Um, well, I mean, first. they do it. They do that in mm -hmm. Breath of Fire Dragon Quarter does a great job of that, of that replayability on an RPG level if you're trying to just get the story. So mm -hmm. I genuinely, I don't know if I've ever talked about Breath of Fire Dragon Quarter on the stream. Do you guys, did I ever talk to you guys about it in general? No. Um, so Breath of Fire Dragon Quarter is great. So you have a little ticker on the top corner of your screen and it's a percentage and it goes down every step you take. And you need to finish the game before that ticker goes to zero. Otherwise you just die and it's over. Right? Huh. huh. So, yeah. and it's very doable if you go through it without using the special ability that you have that can essentially one shot any boss. Mm. And when you, whenever you use those abilities, that ticker just starts going down like really, really, really fast. And then you die and then you have to start over from the beginning. But depending on how far you got, you get new cutscenes. You get to see what the people were doing in the background, what the villains were doing. They knew about you from the beginning and you didn't know that they knew about you. And that they were following um, you from the beginning. Hmm. And they give you those cutscenes and they give you those layers. But they do it in a way where you don't need those cutscenes to get the full story. Like if you were to just beat it first try, mm -hmm. it's still a good complete story. But when you start seeing what was going on in the background, you're like, oh, oh my God, like they were following me the whole time. Oh my God, <laughs> like they're, or, or cool. we just missed each other. Like uh -huh. it's, it's, it's really cool in that way. I and like, and I like, like do that a lot. That's that's yeah, right. Definitely. And that was the first time I've ever been like the first time I've ever experienced that, especially when because you get to keep all your weapons and stuff when you die. So they're like, like no, 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 we really, really want you to go again. Go <laughs> again, please. Um, and and when you go through it and you actually experience all those cutscenes, it's like, oh, OK, I'm going to keep going. It's great. It's a good experience. That makes me think of um, Maritanama with the whole. I guess like after like the third ending, you start seeing things from a different side yeah. of the same story, which uh, is really good. Cool. Right? Yes, nice. I, I heard about that. I heard the the rough uh, concept of that. Yes, I'm dying yeah. to play that game. From a I will be playing. I want to play that so much. So do I. Really but I. Bad. But before I play that one, I'm gonna get on this Dark Souls run with Tom. Yes. Oh, we yes, will we be doing. To. We will absolutely be doing a duo playthrough of Dark Souls 3. Tom has not played through it. I have not played through it. We're both huge fans of Dark Souls. I, I did like competitive uh, Dark Souls in the first one. So I'm like really amped to get back into it, build out all my builds. It's going to be a blast. Are you excited, Tom? Nice. So Josh, I haven't, I haven't asked you this, and I didn't prep you for, you know, before the podcast oh, no. to answer this oh, no. very in-depth <laughs> question, but are you I'm... prepared to die? Are you? <laughs> There will be no dying. It's I no, was no born death. to die. Well, okay, hold no, no on. We, we, we will not die. Once. Josh was born to die. <laughs> no, no death. Dark Souls three run the first time through. Yeah, first try. Oh, Tom God, dies yeah. within five minutes. Josh goes for five hours. You, you, you actually joke yeah, about that, that but that's what amazing. happens in fucking Dark Souls. It, within the first off. five minutes of playing Dark Souls, you will die. There's a, um, there is there is an achievement in Dark Souls. I think two or one where you it is like the death in Dark Souls, like your first yeah. death. So mm -hmm. it would be amazing to like 
finish Dark Souls, get all the trophies, and never play it again. Because you would have, you would not have that one achievement. <laughs> People would look at you like, why hasn't he 100 percent it yet? Because he never fucking died. What a god! Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you guys actually pull off a no death first run of Dark Souls three, I will give you my most prized. No, no, there's no worry. I've watched Tom <laughs> play never, Dark Souls. Adam, it ain't happening. Adam, I, I already have a French enemy. press. You don't need to give me your French press. Gonna, uh, <laughs> I don't have a French press. I'll take the. I'll take you. <laughs> but I don't have anything in return. I'll give you a mantis or something. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, uh, yes, so I'm amped on that. Other than that, man, just getting ready for a, a certain friend to arrive on a certain day for a certain event, which will be RLCS coming up. Oh, One man, that's going to be... Huh? One week out? One week out, and our friend Adam will be here. I, I yeah, fully intend to... Less than a week. Oh, shit, you're right. So we <laughs> spent we the will... whole day... We... Yeah, we Safe. spent the whole day cleaning for this, so <laughs> you better be like, "Whoa, it's so clean in oh here!" Oh my god, it's so clean. Can we eat dinner off the floor? Yeah, and please. we will be finding a way to uh, get these two giving us some RLCS footage and yes. Uh, yes. oh keep yes, them in the cast. I, keep I, pay attention I to our plans. our YouTube channel at youtubecom slash seven two pin connector. And yes. there's honestly oh, yeah. a chance of possibly talking them in and them doing some live streams there and getting yes. us some sweet oh, information. Yeah. Oh, we're doing that. Yeah, we're yeah, we're doing sure. that for sure. Um, we'll I'll be I'll be get, I'm planning on video logging the whole thing, like mm -hmm. little bits all the way through it, and then mm -hmm. we'll compile uh, compile it to get together. Um, oh yeah, you want an extra wheels code? No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how valuable this is gonna be if it's tradable. Yeah. So, yeah. So going to RLCS, which... you get a. Um, you get wheels. You get wheels for your car, which is pretty dope. Yeah. Um, this is the first time they've done that. Before yeah. we went to we went to season one, hence the Hollywood shirt. There it is. I don't know if nice. it shows up. There it yeah. is. Um, that was season one. We didn't get anything. <laughs> we just showed up yeah. and had a good time. <laughs> they they but, had delicious food nice. there, by the way. Really? Like yeah, they had alcohol. There's a full bar. I met Kronovi's dad. <laughs> and nice. We got it. We got a drink That's together. Awesome. It was fantastic. Uh, <laughs> but uh, they also had delicious food, like re like a really good onion burger thing that they did is really good. Mm. Um, so I'm hoping that the food, the food standard store, 72 yeah. food connector, yeah, yeah I, can, I can come come in with new, like you know, raising the bar. <laughs> I was actually yes. looking on Google Maps at, at like the restaurants that are right around the venue, and right, in, it's in uh, Koreatown, so there's oh. a lot of. Korean barbecue places around there. So Great. That's, that's going to have to happen, by the way. That's gonna be, it, I've, never had, I've never had Korean barbecue. and I, I don't to. like Korean food. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I like sorry. Korean barbecue. I like Korean barbecue. I've, had I've never had like, Korean food. But straight, like, purest Korean food can't do it. Yeah. I know yeah. we're seeping back Kimchi? into 72, no. 72 Food yeah, Connector yeah. right now, but I cannot. honestly, Kimchi. like, well, I, I had a friend that was like, I have a friend, he's Korean, and uh, another friend, um, who was going to Korea at the time, he's like, we're going to have Korean food today for lunch. And we go out and we have like the most purest Korean food I've ever had. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't do it. Yeah, I couldn't do much, it. It was yeah. the first time I was like, I, I have all sorts of food all over the place, all sorts of different, you know, regions yeah. and whatever. But like, I don't know. It was something about that Korean food. I just couldn't do it. That's fair. So you but said, anyway, but you, guys are all, you guys are all pumped up about the whole RLCS yeah. stuff. Uh -huh. Right. That's not even the tournament that I care the most about right now. <laughs> League of oh, Rockets yeah, just announced, what was it, two days ago, that they're doing a World Cup of Rocket League. Mm -hmm. And it mm, is going yeah. to be fantastic. So for those if you of you, yeah. if you're not right. familiar, uh, League of Rockets is the guy slash group who brought you the 12 Titans, which is a display, like shown after it happened tournament where he mm -hmm. really produces everything. He does really cool replays instead of the standard ones. He gets in really good announcers, and it's all made yeah, like a movie. The best Super announcers, pro by the way. level, yeah. <laughs> the best announcers, which are Johnny Boy and Mega Shogun, which are absolutely, besides maybe, uh, maybe... Um, James Bot, maybe? James Bot, thank you. James Bot. Those are the three best announcers in Rocket League. There's no better announcers. Mm-hmm. So They're having also the best at the game itself, so they know absolutely. a lot about it. 
Yeah, absolutely. So like talk, like having Johnny Boy talk over it was awesome. So I'm really hoping they got Johnny Boy on this um in this one as well, especially because he already did this on Johnny right. Boy's um on Johnny Boy's YouTube channel, you can check it out. He did the um this one is the World Cup mm-hmm. and he actually did this exact thing already on his channel. But obviously yeah. it's not going to be so epically produced. Yes. So what it's going <laughs> to be is there's uh, it's a 3v3 tournament. So standard Rocket League 3v3. And they're they're doing teams of countries. So three people from Ireland will might face three people from Italy and then three people from Scotland. And they're doing a whole tournament like that. Sort of like the Olympics. Um, but it's going to be really cool. Um, if you've seen the 12 Titans, all, the video editing is absolutely incredible. There's already Fantastic. some trailers up for it. It's movie grade level trailers. So it's a right. very new way to watch Rocket League. The production value is insane. Um, so I'm, I'm really, really excited for this. So Last time we all got together in a Discord and just experienced it together. Yeah, it, it was, was so a blast. Good. It was so fun with yeah, everyone. It was so fun. Yeah, that was a good time. So as much as I love live sports and as much as I love watching RLCS last year, that 12 mm-hmm. Titans has been my favorite eSport watching moment I've ever had. It's yeah. just so well produced. It even beats the uh, even international. Beats TI. Beats TI. Wow. If TI was, was to do something like this, it would be essentially them being able to get into the game afterwards and give you the good film angles to show you the stuff at a later time. But have, have you seen Free to Play? Although. No. Although. Okay, we're watching that later. Although, honestly, being at RLCS was better. Oh, being at? Like, like being go, there. Going, yeah, 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 going, yeah, yeah. Like watching. Okay, I watched Amsterdam's, right? Wasn't nearly as fun as being in hollywood for that one it was amazing they did they didn't capture the hype that was actually happening in the room the room would rumble people would scream there was just a bunch of nerds going crazy for these guys (laughs) these guys scoring goals it was it was one of the best uh sports experiences i've had i i went i've been to football games i've been to baseball games Mm -hmm. but just like what was happening in that room was super unique so, how, so how I'm much... really, really excited for this one, So, I, especially because we get new wheels. <laughs> I totally get it because I scream at my television and or computer and or Vive every time TI comes on, right? I, I've I w- right. watched it for the past few years. But how much of that, you know, nerd hype is nerd hype for the sake of, oh, my God, video games and esports are actually a thing now. I'm so excited because I've never seen this. Because, I mean, you know, when you go to a baseball game, baseball has existed since forever, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, We we were born and baseball had been a thing. Um, So it's just kind of normal. And and not very many things are, you know, there aren't very many great games all the time. Right. Every day isn't an amazing game. Right. It actually is. Is is it just because it's new or is it because at the. No, no, it it has to do with the people. It has to okay. do with the people there. I like, think Rocket what was League, great is say uh, Rocket League will end up being, I think, like for a crowd better than Dota because Rocket League is a sport. It's watchable. It's it, watchable. Yeah, you can't it watch Dota. Dota. I could put my dad on a couch and he would understand what's exactly. happening. He might think that's well, crazy, but he would understand yeah, exactly. the ball goes yeah. in the goal, you get a point. Yeah. There, well, right. I mean, Valve I was, has I was produced... there. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So when I was there, like I was talking to like the security guards and the people that were running the event, they were just there and they were watching it too. And they were getting excited too. Like they were, they were pumped. They were like, like the people running the, uh, the stands were like, yeah, like they were going crazy because (laughs) they saw what was going on and they understood it right away. Immediately. They knew what was happening and they knew things that they were doing was insane. I was Mm -hmm. talking to a security guard and he was saying like, like, dude, I gotta get this game. I gotta play this game <laughs> immediately, like right now. This needs to happen. Yeah. Um, um, the so Valve every you know year for the past few years they've had multiple streams of the international. One of them is the simplified stream where they have mm-hmm. casters casting the live matches, but in a very simplified, slow way so they can bring people up to speed. With Rocket League, you don't have that, right? Uh, even even mm-hmm. Overwatch, to some extent, you know, unless you know what's going on, unless you know who the characters are, it's hard to watch it. You can't just sit down and come at it fresh and understand what's going on. Rocket League doesn't have that issue at all, which is why I agree with you guys. Rocket League is going to be the eSport. Right, Overwatch has got the money. Dota has got the hype, but Rocket League—it's the only thing watchable by my mom. 
Right. Yes. Exactly. Yes. I, showed my, I showed my dad Rocket League today for the first time. Oh, you did you? I show yeah. coworkers <laughs> all the time. I show coworkers that regularly. I'm like, oh, this is what Rocket League is. And they're like, oh, oh. And then, and then they kind of watch it for me. Like, okay, I get it. I can get behind this. I see what's going mm -hmm. on. Yeah. So what did but, your um, dad think, Adam? Because I'm intrigued by um, him. Uh, he was like, man, I could not play a game like that to try to figure out, <laughs> like, to follow everything because just how fast it is. Because your dad used and to actually he, play, like, COD, didn't he? On the Wii yeah. or something? Uh, yeah, he, yeah he, he has a PS3, and he every Christmas we'd buy him a Call of Duty game, and he'd play through the campaign, and that's it. But he still liked it. But, um, yeah, he was just like, wow, that's kind of weird because <laughs> of the cars and stuff, I think, flying and, and flipping around and stuff, but he, he got it. He understood. Yeah, and uh, Soul but, um, points out something else real quick. Yes, fighting mm -hmm. games are probably about the only other thing that are simple to watch. It's just I think yeah. people, unless you're into fighting games, people get bored with fighting games. Uh, yeah. Because you don't I mean, understand all the nuance. The yes. issue, right. So I mean, if there was there was this moment in a Street Fighter tournament where if you if you tap uh, the controls towards your opponent. It, the exact like microsecond that the, it was going to hit you, you would do this crazy like perfection block. And it was, you know, like 20, 40 of those in a row. And all the fighting community was going nuts. I'm just like, oh, cool. He's blocking, right? Because I'm not into fighting games that much. Right. I, I don't play them. I, I suck at Street Fighter. Um, mm -hmm. It's, they are easy to watch. They're easy to understand the main goal. And yeah, there's stuff like that in Rocket League, right? When you get the absolute perfect bounce in the aerial control and you, you air dribble the ball into the goal, it's way more impressive to, you know, Adam or Josh. Uh, but my mom still understands that that's really fucking cool, right? Watching, right. watching Diego and Street Fighter do these tap blocks isn't necessarily really impressive to a nobody. Right, yes. right. I Absolutely. That's one of the things that I noticed when I was looking at, like, you watch, you watch uh, StarCraft, you watch Dota, especially um, those ones, like, you don't know the nuances. Fighting games is more so than anything. Honestly, mm -hmm. I feel, I really genuinely feel that fighting games are harder to understand the nuances than any other game, because mm -hmm. you don't know why all of a sudden that guy just got pummeled into, like, a totally ridiculous chain. Exactly. They call, oh, they're fighting, they're fighting, they're fighting. Oh, now that guy's dying. Like, why is that guy dying all of a sudden? And why can't that guy stop that situation from happening? Yeah. They have no idea. They have no idea. Because yeah. there's there's like a gap. There's like a, a like a one frame gap. Like all open opening. Like all what the fuck opening was that? Like, like I didn't There see was anything. no fucking opening. <laughs> yeah, like what what are you talking about opening? And he's like, Yeah, it was blatant. What an idiot. You're like, well, I don't know that. <laughs> like whereas if you watch Rocket League, you're like, okay. Like that guy wasn't in net. That guy didn't get back fast enough. That guy missed the That's ball. That's the opening. That's the yeah. opening. Yeah. You know, or oh, he was so close. I see, but like since I was, you know, I saw that that, that guy was a little close than the other guy. Like you can see that happening, and you know it's, how it's soccer because works. Rocket League has got you know such a an easy tie to real world events, right? Every at least everyone in a, everyone in the rest of the world, right? Soccer is the sport. Everyone in America, at the right. very least, has grown up you know playing little league soccer. Uh, we all yeah. know how that shit works, right? You take something right. like, you know, a football or uh, yeah, let's let's stick with football for the rest of the world. American football, the rules are kind of opaque, right? The rules are a little weird. You know, is it pass interference? Is it not? Is it one foot down, two foot, two feet down in the end zone right. sort of stuff? Uh, soccer is, on one hand, relatively easy to understand. And on the other hand, universally understood. Or at least I would mm -hmm. say uh, planetarily right, right, understood. Right. Yeah. Ah. Rocket League. We've been on yeah. that before. We'll just let that sit <laughs> yeah. where it's anyway, at. Anyway, yeah. uh, we that's, need to move so that's past more that. Or less, that's more or less what I've been playing, what I've been gearing up for, what I'm hyped about. Um, what about you, Eric? What, what have you been up to? Well, the same old that we always talk about. Definitely did some RL, Rocket League. Definitely did some uh, Battlegrounds. But I also picked up Factorio. And um, for those of you who aren't familiar, I've talked about it way back on the cast, but it's a mm -hmm. automation game. Your goal is to streamline things, to make things, make things for you. You're making a factory. Your entire planet's a factory. And the end goal is to make a spaceship to leave because your ship was wrecked and that's why you're there. Right. They had, Eric. Um, yes, sir. As a software developer, programmer, this game was built for you. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, yes, it was. So um, actually, I realized after my very first factory, I'm like, well, I didn't do this very well. So I started a new one after 30 hours, made a brand new one. And this one, after 50 hours, I realized, oh, shit, 
I know how I can make this scalable because, you know, software developer scalability is what I'm all about. So I make this all new and then I realize, oh, I didn't put my throughput enough. So I scratch it after like 60 hours and start a whole brand new one. But <laughs> yeah. now um, I was in this. It's going great. I made it to where it's scalable perfectly. And I load in this new beta patch. And oh my God, they just changed everything for me. They made things be bigger, do different things. It's just amazing to see that this um, developer, these developers are still updating this game. It's early access and they're still patching every month. Then they just brought in like nuclear power. So now you have to get uranium and put it to centrifuges to split out these two different things. So you can put them into reactors and you have to handle the waste. Oh, nice. And it's just incredibly complex, but -hmm. it doesn't have to be. You don't want it to be. So, so the fact right. that they cool. did the the programmer equivalent of going Angular one to Angular two on your ass, the not that steep. anyway. Okay, the entire framework <laughs> yes. bottomed out on you. Not that steep, but um, <laughs> it's really cool because whenever you do this kind of design, I did. I look, step back and looked, and I realized this looks like a fucking motherboard. What I was making looked like a right. fucking motherboard from a computer. <laughs> the way I had things running out of it. For the U- U tech guys, I had a main bus running through my factory, splitting off wires down to the actual nodes that needed it to produce things to go back to the main bus to go to the next station. It's amazing. It's right. a fucking computer. So, so going back to what you were saying a second ago where you, you destroyed it, you rebuilt it, you destroyed it, you rebuilt it, that's actually how you're supposed to play those sort of games. It, it's the best way of playing. It's the best experience. Like if you're going into like – like a minecraft experience where you're doing like all your redstone and stuff and you're destroying and rebuilding like that's how you're supposed to experience those sort of games um my first experience with factoria wasn't that great but it was because i wasn't doing that i was i was being handheld through the whole thing like this is the optimal way to pull this off and that ruins the game entirely yes it does so if anybody is Right. If anyone wants to play Factorio and get into it and get really involved in it and they think this is the game for them, just remember that it's a game that you should you should be failing at. <laughs> you know, yeah, you should first. go in there you can and do a the shit whole job. Thing by watching yeah, you should, you You're always all- failing. Right. You should be. It's and just that's okay. Of failure. Am I failing less this time? It actually right, really exactly. emulates what it's like to be a programmer in real life. It's, you know, okay, I am failing, but how bad am I failing? Right. And the right, cool right. thing is, it is multiplayer, so I want to get people to play with me. But everyone that I've ever played this with has bounced from it. I'm the only person uh, I know in my circles that have stuck. The game sold over a million you... copies. People love it. It's just I'm the only yeah. one in my circle that sticks with it, except for, I think, um, um, it... one guy. I, I only remember his real name. I'm not going to say it on cast. He plays it over in the casual server sometimes. Mm. Dave. Yeah, Dave absolutely does. Yes. <laughs> I'll say that. <laughs> okay, you'll say, say the name. It. Okay. <laughs> it's, Dave is it's pretty ambiguous. Of, yes. So it's there's one of 10 million different Dave's. <laughs> yeah, that's an understatement. Oh, Dave. Yeah, but, I know Dave. The, uh, yeah, Dave. Honestly, Dave. yeah, I no, know a Dave. Solid Snake Dave. Um, Dave Snake. Honestly, there's, there's a few people. There's a few people that play it, love it. It takes a certain mind. It's just a mm-hmm. certain type of game. It's a genre, yeah. right? It's, but it's, it's like it's, human resource it's, machine. It, it's a very specific person that enjoys those sort of games like Game terraria uh, you and should... then more technical right there's there's two people that love that game and that's dave and brian and those are very general names but you should talk with them and enjoy the game with them they will play it to the ends of the earth yes. <laughs> but for me that's all i've been playing um tom uh, actually, You've been playing a little something that's pretty hot and heavy on the Switch. Yes, yes. Well, actually, two things that are well, hot and heavy on the, the Switch. The one we've we've hit a thousand times. So I don't care about yeah, that. Yeah, There's yeah. another one that's <laughs> really big. A bit of Breath of the Wild, uh, because, you know, Breath of the Wild. You're supposed to. It's I, I finally right. obligatory. If you own a Switch, piece. you have to play this, and then you have to talk about with all your friends how great it is. I, I right, will right, say... Right. Um, for just this one little sidebar on Breath of the Wild. Um, most other Zelda games, you know, it's like, oh, hey, I'm going to grab my item, and now I'm going to just wreck the dungeon, because that's what the dungeon's all about, is grabbing whatever magical MacGuffin and running through the dungeon with it. Um, Breath of the Wild does not do that, uh, because, you know, after you go through the little tutorial thing in Breath of the Wild that, you know, lasts maybe an hour, if you would say, you know, to, to get all of your stuff, like stasis yeah. and whatnot. Um, after you get that, you don't get any other, like, new game-changing items. You'll get, like, more powerful swords, more powerful bows, different arrows, but nothing that absolutely changes the way you'll play the game. Um, 
the dungeons themselves um, are all about traversal. It's understanding, okay, I have to go here, I have to do this thing to manipulate the way this dungeon works. It's literally, how do I move through this game? And that's, I figured out what, uh, what the little key to Breath of the Wild was. Because every game since Ocarina of Time has had this little gimmick. Zelda cannot be born without gimmicks. Modern Zelda can't be built yeah. without gimmicks. And Ocarina of Time was the Ocarina. Majora's Mask was the three days thing. You can go all down through the line. They've all had gimmicks. Breath of the Wild mm -hmm. is traversal. Uh, the entire game is about moving through the world. And you see that in the adventure, in the overworld, and you even see that in the dungeons now. And it, it just finally clicked. I'm like, oh... I have so much fun in Breath of the Wild just fucking around and being in this world and going from place to place and, oh shit, look at that fucking mountain. I'm climbing to the top of that bitch. I don't care how long it takes. Uh, in the dungeons <laughs> the are exactly that way too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a shit ton of fun. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm probably, I can't even give a percentage, uh, but I've got two of the big things out of the four big things that I need to do the other big thing. Um, without getting too too spoilery, I, we can go ahead and say you've done three of the four main temples in the game. So you two can, of the four, two. Oh, sorry, two sorry. Four. You've done two of the four main temples. Yes. And for, in case it hasn't been said, technically you can do zero and beat the game. Yes. If if you yeah. no speed run trickery, you really can just yeah. go do it. The it, game tells you to go cool. do it. Yeah. yeah. It's it's fucking amazing. You can get good and just fucking beat the game. You don't have to do anything. Um, you should, but you can get good. Um, but then I, uh, I actually rebought a game, and I have the feeling I'm going to do this a lot with the Switch. Um, mm -hmm. So at work, I'm not driving to work anymore. This is great. It's amazing. I've got my final apartment. I just set up my gaming PC last night. Um, I get an, roughly an hour on the bus to chill and play whatever game I want. Most of the time it's been Breath of the Wild, but I wanted some more stuff. So I rebought Shovel Knight for the Switch. Uh, and I've been playing nice. through that. <laughs> I've still been dying to play that game. Oh, it's so I've not played it. Good. It's so my buddy good. Matt loves that game. Mm -hmm. It's a it's it's a very very popular game. That one that one I hear a lot about. Yeah, yeah. definitely. It's um so on the Switch they've got uh, when you buy it on the Switch you get the two additional campaigns just out of the gate, um, which I haven't touched at all. I've just been doing the Shovel Knight campaign. Um, mm -hmm. I never. I have an issue, and I don't know if you guys share this issue, but I have so many goddamn games on Steam and on my computer that, like, I'll be playing Shovel Knight, and then I'll die, and I'll be like, oh, well, that was a cool run, and then I'll go and play something else, and then I'll die, and I'll be like, eh, maybe I'll play something else, right? I don't want to go back and retread old ground, because Shovel Knight, you die, and it sends you back to the next check or last checkpoint, and I get annoyed. On the Switch, it's like, oh, well, I could play Zelda, Nah, I'll keep trying this. So I've actually been sticking with Shovel Knight instead of shutting it off after every time I die. Um, nice. It's it's really good. The music is amazing. The graphics are just the perfect, most crisp NES graphics you've ever seen. They're so yeah. goddamn good. The sound the soundtrack is infectious. It's awesome chiptune music. So nice. I one thing I will say about this, I love to a degree that people are going back sometimes and making a really cool 16 bit kind of games and i know this one's more of an 8-bit but dear god at some point they got to stop every <laughs> fucking week there's a new this 16-bit graphic beautiful no 16-bit hey, hey, was hey. not listen here 16-bit was not fucking beautiful that's why we went to 60 fucking four the okay. have you seen oh, children of morta on. have you seen children of morta pixel art can be beautiful no have pixel you seen art children is beautiful when yes. you do modern shit with it no no pixel art no, no no the thing that makes art right if you have no physical limitations right if adam were to just say okay i'm going to think of a song and it magically manifests itself on its hard drive right Art becomes meaningless at that thing, at that point. The thing that makes art is limitations. And when you're a pixel artist, like right. the Shovel Knight people set out and they said, okay, within the best of reason, because they can't do it perfectly, within the best of our ability, we're going to make this NESable, which means no more than, you know, eight colors, eight palettes, uh, palette colors right. in a single mm -hmm. sprite. Um, you know, they, they artificially limited themselves. They did actual, you know, chip music that could run on those chips, roughly. There, there are some exceptions. Um, and they spent a whole shit ton of time making it beautiful. Fez, right? The minimalistic graphics mm -hmm. of Fez are utterly gorgeous and meaningful yeah. in the game. Uh, yes, but that is not an 1816-bit game. No, it's not, but something like Hyper Light Drifter, right? I, I hate the trend of, 
we're going to throw pixel art in this because it's going to be trendy. That's not why you do mm -hmm. it, right? It's actually a shit ton of work to make a pixel art game. If you made, yeah, you know, it a, is. <laughs> a, a shitty looking 3D game that's low poly, that's way, way easier to make something low poly than it is to do pixel art. Because pixel art, it's really hard to differentiate when you get into the low, low pixels. Uh, with mm -hmm. low poly, it's, well, it's this like stick thing and it's got a ball on the top and it's brown and green. So I guess that's a tree. It just makes sense, right? Um, yeah. But I, I sort of disagree because you look at somebody like Hyper Light Drifter, right? That took that aesthetic and they made it absolutely gorgeous, painstakingly gorgeous. Yes, but there's so many people doing it now. It's getting beat to the ground to me. I, I agree. There's so many people doing first person shooters too and whatever. I mean, there's always going to be these big trends in gaming. Well, I right. know first person it's, it's gonna and it's gonna fluctuate and it's gonna It does. Exactly. That's a there's genre but, though, not an everyone's art. Everyone's made style. World War II games. It is. No, 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 no. That's first not true. person okay. shooter is a genre, not an art style. But that's that's true. the trend though. That's the trend. That's yeah, how it's okay, a trend so, in FPS. So in the same day. in the same vein we can say the super desaturated brown gritty lens flare effect <laughs> yes. in first person shooters that was absolutely a trend there for a while and it's starting to get away from that now you're starting to see more color in first person games and shooters mm -hmm. and stuff you know the same could be said for this but yeah but i've been I... buying pixel art games for the last five fucking <laughs> yeah. years i, I agree they're that, not that's a personal away. decision that's a personal no, no, decision. no no i'm just saying they're yeah. pushing them for like five six years now they're not stopping you you go it's back and you look at something effect. like braid right which looks like a goddamn yeah. painting in motion and it's a breath mm -hmm. of fresh air you're going to get yeah. indie games that have beautiful looks like the swapper for instance the swapper wasn't mm -hmm. pixel art at all uh, but it yeah. had its own flair. It had its own style, which is great. I, I think Love people. It. I think people default to pixel art because they say, "Oh, I'm I'm making an indie game, so it has to look pixely," and that's the wrong right. way to go about it, right? You have to make your art style fit your game. That's why Wind Waker is still fucking gorgeous to this day, even though mm -hmm. when you look at the raw specs and the raw shit powering Wind Waker, it's it could run on a goddamn toaster by today's standards. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's still one of the most beautiful games I've ever seen because the the art style fits the aesthetics of play. And that's what it's about. Um, so I, I can I see mean, it. I mean, it, it's just a trend. It, things trend up and they trend down, but that doesn't mean they go away. Mm -hmm. Like zombie yeah. games. There's a zombie game. Like there was a zombie game coming out every afternoon yeah. uh, last year, <laughs> right? And the year before that, right? Yeah. There was a, we were in a big zombie game mode, but then they kind of stopped. But this year, a zombie game is coming out. One of the one of the bigger ones that they that they've been trying to do. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when you come with pixel art, pixel art is going to just keep coming. But it, that doesn't mean it's mainstream. It doesn't mean it's popular. Think, it, just well, it, it is popular, though. It is right, no, popular no, no, no. right now. Yeah. Right. That's my point, though, is like it's not it's not the thing. It's not like always being pumped out. Like, the, the, these mm -hmm. things are, are always going to exist. So like horror games, for instance, there's, there's asymmetrical horror games that come out all the time. You know, there's asymmetrical games that come out. There's, there, there, there's always something coming out. It, it goes along with like the movies. The movie genre is like you'll have the western, you'll have the horror movie, you'll have the zombie movie, you'll have the giant monster flick, and those kind of come in cycles, right? Mm -hmm. Each time, each time with with cinema, that's how it works. That's how it's always worked. And for games to do that, that doesn't make that, that makes perfect sense. How that would flow in and out making uh pixel art straight through is it it's not going to be mainstream per se but there'll be a time when it'll be a hundred percent you're just gonna get a shit ton of pixel art i think we're in that time i think we're in yeah. a time where you're gonna get a lot of a lot a lot of pixel art i think it's a side effect of how popular indie games are getting to the whole yeah absolutely you know, hey it's getting easier and easier for people to start making games there's all kinds of tools out there game maker right. you know those kind of things and the easiest games to make are 2d games it's yes. easier to make there's less variables and when you think 2d game you probably think pixel art i mean they kind of go hand in hand and there's obviously a lot of exceptions too but you know that's i think that's part of the reason why you see so many pixel games and why some people are getting really tired of them Right. I mean, they're really easy yep. to produce in certain ways. Like if you want to make it beautiful and magical and, and an experience that you're going to hold close to your chest for the rest of your life, that's a lot of work. But if you're just going to, you know, throw something out really quickly, you, you can do a pixel art game really quickly. Like yeah. Mario initially, 
like he had no art ability. That's that's the that he reused the bushes as the clouds. The same thing, right? Um, the, the exact same sprite. Yeah. <laughs> so um, going through and like you had boxes and you had this guy and and he was a very simplistic character, but he was a programmer, so he made a game, right? So pixel art mm-hmm. can be done really simplistically and still be very effective. That's why they choose it. You don't have to have an art guy on on staff. It really depends on the game you're making, right? So uh, right. Thomas was alone. Uh, it's a it's a great little uh, indie pic- puzzle platformer thing, um, and the guy is a uh, a programmer. He's he's not an artist at all. So he made colored squares. The entire game is just fucking colored squares that talk to each other with you know a, a narrator. Um, there there is nothing technically impressive about that game right it's not like incredible pixel art but it really it fits the gameplay because you're moving fucking squares around that's what the entire game is built around yeah. um, uh-huh. so they built the art style around the gameplay and I, I think that's where developers need to start looking right your game doesn't have to be pixel art it does it fit the aesthetic right shovel knight is trying to be uh, a modern take on the nes games of our childhood that we loved right like they, mm-hmm. they take ducktales and mega man and and blaster master and they smush them together and you get shovel knight um and the the graphics the pixel art fits the aesthetics of the gameplay that they're trying to evoke um Mm -hmm. you know do do most pixel games need pixel art probably not right most likely not they just do it yeah um but in you know for for all uh, that said, uh, Shovel Knight is awesome. You should totally buy it. <laughs> if, yeah. if, you, if you want to, go rebuy it on the Switch right now. Um, it is fucking rad. It is one of the yeah. tops or one of the better selling games for the Switch currently. Yeah, it's it's nice. totally worth uh, you know the money. And it, it's not an expensive game. I want to say I put 20 bucks, maybe, maybe 30. That's one thing I, I hate about buying games on the Switch is you know I don't have Steam sales. I have the Switch. Yeah, that'll mm. happen. Yeah. Yeah. But let's just go on. Let's uh, parlay the Switch talk to some Switch news. <laughs> Switch news. Um, so the Switch <laughs> has a big title being released or going to be released. It's uh, Monster Hunter XX, or also I think some people are calling it Monster <laughs> Hunter Double Cross. I'm still waiting for Monster Hunter Triple X. So yeah, what this is the next triple that's going to be the pinnacle of the series for sure. So what this is is essentially a add-on to Monster Hunter Generations, which was a 3DS exclusive. And I'm going to get my little bit in, and I'm throwing it to Josh because I know Josh is going to have shit for this. But oh my myself, gosh. I have played Monster Hunter Mobile and console, and I don't see why they always try to make this a mobile game. It suits console so much better. Oh, Josh, yes. where do you stand on this? I am so excited for this. Yes, I agree. I mean, no, in a way, I don't agree because um, it's a really simple game. Before, like, you go from zone to zone, and it loads each zone as you go from area to area. Uh, it's a really simple game for a console, mm. in a way. At least it, it had been in the past, especially the ones like, especially Monster Hunter Freedom and those ones, because you only had one area right in this one hopefully there's more like a bit more of an expansion on the area and then it's more of a console game yeah, but well, yeah like monster hunter tried loved it right right exactly so i i'm really excited for this i think this is going to be a great uh it's a great title it'll be a lot of fun to just dive in and just tear it up i have generation um, on the 3ds and i will be picking this up for the switch because i have not been able to put enough time <laughs> on the 3ds version it's interesting that this is coming out around the same time that uh, the Monster Hunter clone is coming out. It seems it seems really interesting. I wonder I wonder if they if they were doing them in tandem. I know that Monster Hunter there, there is always a new one coming out, so they probably planned on it. Mm-hmm. So we'll see how they stack up against each other. We should definitely do a comparison. The once only we have them both. Only bad news so far. It's only been confirmed for Japan. Ooh. Oh, the, mm. the good news. 3D or the Switch is not region locked, so you can literally just switch it over to Japan, get it. You just won't have subtitles or be able to read anything unless you're really gifted and know both. Mm. I'll have to bring a friend over. I know I, I have a friend that knows <laughs> Japanese really well. They just go ahead and sit on my shoulder. Well, what does that say? Uh, <laughs> you sit there for three hours and let me play this game. 
Yeah. yeah. Stay. <laughs> All right. Um, another quick little hit. Um, I didn't even know this is happening. At E3, Neil deGrasse Tyson is going to elaborate more on the game that he is helping. Um, I don't have the name of it, but Neil deGrasse Tyson is working. Tyson, big science guy, is working yeah. with some developers to make a um, space civilization style game where you're actually like building civilization, going to different planets, doing research. Like a right. full scale strategy saw, game. I, I saw really, this. It looks interesting. Cool. It looks dry, but it looks interesting. I have seen yeah. this. <laughs> the concept has me incredibly intrigued. Mm -hmm. I like I like that you games. can pretty much ensure that it's all going to be pretty accurate because yes. Neil's got his name on it and he's not going to stand for that shit at all. Right. <laughs> this so, this we'll isn't going to turn we'll into hope. Sim Cities in space. <laughs> yeah. So, well, hopefully, hopefully it's not just like a Tony Hawk Pro Skater. You know where he just has his name on it, but the developers <laughs> yeah. did all the work. Well, yeah. Or if it's more like a, you know, Matt Stone Trey Parker experience where he's well, there yeah. every day trying to, to make it happen. To give credit, or, um, Tony Hawk actually was very, very heavily oh, involved true. in Tony mm -hmm. Hawk Pro Skater, like extremely. Like whenever uh, Never Talk to give him builds of the game, he would um, add ideas or nick certain things because they didn't accurately reflect skateboarder culture. He right. did. He okay. actually did motion capture for the game too. Yes, but he didn't nice. say that's not realistic. We're, no. Where <laughs> Neil deGrasse Tyson's well, going to be like, yeah. no, that's not possible. Right. Neil, right, right. Where Tony, Tony Hawk, Hawk says, yeah, we can do 1080s yeah. off a big enough half pipe. Let's do it. Yeah. Neil's, yeah. Neil's the kind of guy to uh, get in contact with the people who made Titanic and tell them that the sky was wrong <laughs> during that particular yes. scene based on the time of year and the angle of the camera. And Did they actually, they, yeah, and they actually fixed it for like Jesus. the re release or the whatever. No way. Yeah. It's fucking awesome. So, so if something's it, wrong, he's going to tell them, and then they're going to fix it. That's, that's sick. awesome. Civ Four yeah. had Leonard Nimoy as kind of their their narrator. I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. see, I this game will be an utter failure unless Neil deGrasse Tyson and Bill Nye, the fucking science guy, oh, are yes. the narrators for this game. You get to pick a uh, like a uh, colony captain. And oh like, my God. you get like <laughs> five different guys. You get like Neil deGrasse Titan. You get Bill Nye. You get the Asian guy who was on the universe who was awesome with the Michio white Kaku? hair. Yes. Yeah. That would be great. Fuck yes. Okay. I like if, if Bill Nye is in this game in any capacity, I will buy it. I doubt it. But anyway, um, yeah. E3, <laughs> more news is coming out um, here in, um, well, after next month, it's like two or three weeks away. We will be giving you some more news on that. Um, we have one more or two more actually game release information super hot vr just came out this last uh thursday we have to play this um nice. it is currently going to like 18 bucks and i think there was a discount if you own super hot okay. um mm. it's now on vive super hot vr has been out for oculus and you can do the revive with oculus to play it that said nice. super hot is fantastic and from watching trailers this vr adaptation is great Nice. And if you're not familiar with Super Hot, actually, Eric made a nice little review of it on YouTube. So check that out. Um, another game release trailer came out this week. Um, I've never played much of this series, but I'm incredibly intrigued by this trailer. The uh, Tower Climb Open World Game number five. Yeah. Generic Tower <laughs> yes. Climb Open World Game number five. Have you seen this trailer yet? I, I did see this. I, I read uh, that there was controversy because you're like shooting crazy Christians or something. No, it looks yeah. great. Far Cry Five. No, okay. Yeah, Eric, or um, Tom definitely watched the trailer because I could not care less about another Far Cry game. But after watching okay. that trailer, I'm actually going to keep my eye on it because but, it I looks mean, like it was maybe a little more story focused, or maybe I just didn't get that into the other ones. Well, so I mean, the, the trailers, though, they've always had, with the ex exception of Primal, um, they've always mm -hmm. had kind of this bend towards story or interesting characters. Mm -hmm. And then you play the game, and it has almost nothing to do with your actual gameplay. This relates a lot more, and I've heard some people who have gotten some inside and from like some of the podcasts is to guys mm -hmm. you know in the industry get yeah. invited to things and they've seen it and they're like it ties okay all right um yeah. it's it takes place in montana and you have this super christian post know, or like dooms, doomsday kind of group and mm -hmm. what happens is they essentially set up a cult in a military and they take over this entire county hmm and honestly i'm really excited for it to be set in like rural America. Realistic cool. for us. It hits home and it's realistic to us. Yeah, yeah that's, well, that's I mean, interesting. Well, yeah, I, I really hope they nail it because Far Cry 3 was really good with Voss 
like that that main protagonist was probably one of the best protagonists out of the entire series. Like I've never seen one uh, one, one villain that they portrayed better than that guy. He was mm. insane, but he was also like you kind of got what he was doing and mm-hmm. and, and I, I feel like he left us a little too early in that in that story if you haven't played far cry 3 play it it's the hard it's definitely the high watermark of the series hopefully yeah. that one is kind of done in the same manner mm-hmm. to me this seems like it's going to have rapture-esque religious aspects to it put into yeah. the far cry equation yeah you definitely have the super a Christian cult leader who looks a whole lot like Charles Manson, and that has to be hmm. intentional from watching the, <laughs> right, the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm excited for it. I'm really excited for it. I, I just, I again, I really hope they do it. Like Far Cry Four had such a cool uh, cinematic on the first time I watched the uh, the trailer for it. It mm-hmm. had this really great protagonist, and I was really excited about it. But it mm-hmm. it kind of ended up a little lackluster for me, so I, I'm yeah. really I, I really really hope they pull it off. Yeah, I really hope I, they do a great job. I hope it's not another generic Ubisoft Far Cry game. And... <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. You just hit the nail on the head on why this game will be an utter failure in my eyes once and forever, uh, and that's because Ubisoft is making it. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> hey man, uh, you, don't you never know. You never know. I always hate on Ubisoft. Resident Evil pulled it back around. Maybe they can. I too. like the division. Rainbow Six Siege is getting a shit ton of love. Mm-hmm. You can't just always hate on them. If, they, I mean, they, they might pull really it off. Play, on, they it did it be before. Okay. They they did it before with Far Cry Three. Far Cry Three was amazing. All they if they do, can nail they it just again, get rid of you. Play like everything else could be mostly <laughs> forgiven, right? Watch Dogs cannot be forgiven, but but getting rid of you. Play Watch Dogs would, Two was fantastic. Watch Dogs Two, I, I heard. I never played it. Was great. Watch Dogs One was a fucking trash fire, and I did play that. Um, but if they got rid of you, play there would be so much like goodwill there. They're like, oh hey. We're going to actually embrace Steam, you know, like we should have done for the past six years. Everyone gets up in arms the minute someone tries to do something that counters Steam. <sighs> yeah, I, I don't. It's always what happens. But anyway, I know there's one more tidbit of news, which uh, has another. Well, no, actually, I think they took their down. Anyway, Red Dead Redemption 2 has been pushed back and will no longer make the fall release date. It is now back to spring 2018. I am really uh, looking forward to Red Dead Redemption, and I, it makes me sad that I'm going to have to wait longer. I'm I'm okay with this, but um, yeah, mostly think... because you know Breath of the Wild got delayed however many times, and it mm-hmm. ended up ended up being great. If Rockstar is delaying, yeah. that's right. Rockstar is a developer we can trust. Uh, they mm-hmm. they don't put out dog shit. If if the, a game yeah. has a Rockstar logo on it, I know. It's at the very least, it's going to be well made, right? LA Noir wasn't a, a great, outstanding game in my eyes, but it was well made. Um, you know, if they push back Red Dead Redemption, they've got reasons for it, right? They wouldn't say, "Hey, we decided not to print money this year." Um, they've probably got good reasons behind wanting to get some extra cooking time. Yeah, yeah. it's. I'm okay with them taking until 2019. Red Dead yeah. is probably number two right now for me or well, two or three mm-hmm. on my favorite all-time open world games and i will let them yeah. take their time to get this right yeah absolutely yeah i'd rather rather than take the time get it right than to rush it in any way and get a lesser experience out of it yeah agreed. absolutely agreed well and I think that's about all we got for you guys this week. Uh, any of you guys got anything to add? Yes. Uh, CSGO got a pretty big update. Uh, there's, like, new maps and stuff. I think there might be even, like, a campaign-ish mode added. Um, so I'm going to check that out this week. Um, I know you guys aren't too into CSGO. Uh, I don't play it as often as I'd like. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's cool. Um, so if you've got time, go check that out. Uh, I know Valve is ramping up for... Uh, TI, so they've got new compendium stuff out, um, you know, extra unlocks, and I, I think there's even like a co-op campaign mode in there. So uh, go check that out. Well, uh, for us, I think it's about all we got. If you have any topics you'd like us to talk about, you can um, tweet them at us at, at 72 PC Podcast. Um, if you'd like to see this or any of our other casts, if you're watching live, you can go to our YouTube channel at 72 Pin Connector. 
If you're listening to our audio version or watching on our YouTube, we do stream this live every Saturday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And from 72 Pin Connect, that's all we got for you this week. So until next week, game on. See you, everyone. Take care.